Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, we have more details following the suspension of former Siege of Police Chief Marie Garizales. And a 10 standoff in San Antonio ends with a suspect now in custody. Plus, we hear the struggle of a Houston woman living out in her vehicle for days following Hurricane Barrel. We had a few little showers roll around the area, and guess what? We're going to be seeing more and more and more showers as we get to the weekend. It could be a little bit of a downpour. We'll be talking all about that coming up a little bit later on. Back to you. U.S. border agencies are seeing a drop in encounters at the southern border. The possible reason why this afternoon. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Karina Garcia. Victoria County deputies arrested a 42 year old woman today. Crystal Anderson of Victoria facing six charges, including bail jumping, unauthorized use of a vehicle and theft of a firearm. She remains in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of a $75,000 bond. And Victoria County deputies arrested a 26 year old man Monday. William Jones of Victoria faces a charge from Bear County of sexual assault of a child. He is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of a $25,000 bond. And Wharton police arrested a 33 year old man Sunday. Christopher Villiant of Corpus Christi facing six charges included aggravated robbery in New Aces County. He is in the Wharton County Jail in lieu of a $105,000 bond. Monday night, the Cedrift City Council fired its police chief, Marie Garizales. She refused to give comment. The city suspended Garizales on June 25th. The Port Lavaca Wave reports recently hired officer Cheyenne Beaver was named intern chief on June 26, while the investigations into Garizales and officer James Easley were conducted. Authorities said the investigation cleared Easley. He will return to work once he has taken care of his medical issues. Chief Garizales was hired full time on May 3rd of 2023. She joined the department in November of 2021 part time. So here is your Veerpool. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, how would you rate the performance of your local police department? Excellent, good, fair or poor? We want to hear your opinion on this. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. And we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 6. The DPS reports two men were injured in a crash in Goliad Sunday night. 18 year old James Prada was driving a 2019 black BMW at over 100 miles an hour when he lost control on Peril Street in Goliad. The car struck a power pole and about half of Goliad was without power after this crash. Prado and a 20 year old man, Jonathan Guerrero, the passenger in that vehicle, were transported to the hospital where they were treated with non life threatening injuries. And just this morning, Victoria Police and emergency crews responded to a two vehicle wreck on North Navarro Street. Police say the Volkswagen was traveling east onto a private drive when a GMC traveling northbound hit it from behind. All drivers and passengers were taken to area hospitals with non life threatening injuries. The GMC driver was cited for failure to control speed, no driver's license, and not securing to children under eight or less than four foot nine inches in their safety seats. And now let's take a look at your forecast with our chief meteorologist, Mac Bettis. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, the uh, doom, the heat dome, uh, is going to split in half. It's half of it's going west, the other half's going east. And so what that's going to do is provide an area of low pressure on top of us to give us a lot of rain over the next few days. In fact, by the weekend, we could see two to four inches of rain. So don't put the rain gear away just yet. It's not a heat wave. It's going to be a um, rather tropical rain showers coming in uh, to much of the coastal bend. We'll have all the details coming up a little bit later on. Mac, thank you. In Houston, a woman has slept in her vehicle for a week ever since Hurricane Barrel slammed Texas and left millions of customers without electricity. Christina says she has a home, but the sweltering summer heat, it's far too hot to stay inside without air conditioning. So now she's forced to sleep in her car. Chunk. There's my pillows, blankets. This is how I've been living without power. This is where you sleep. This is where I sleep. This is every single night, every single night. This is where I've been sleeping. I cannot sleep in the home. It's way too hot. Me and my dog, we're out here. This is us. This is home for us right now. I haven't been with my kids for, for three days. I'm not able to leave the home because I can't lock my doors. I work from home. This is 
my livelihood, but I have not been able to work. Um, you're welcome to walk through. This is my home. There's definitely not a air, lot of air pumping in here right now. Take out. I can't cook. I can't do anything. What did Centerpoint say when you reached out to them? I have reached out to Centerpoint more times than I can really tell you. I have been informed differently every time I reach out to them. If we pull up Centerpoint's outage map, it shows that her neighborhood is energized with the potential for localized outages. Even though her neighborhood is in the green, Centerpoint tells me that there could be a circuit level outage, which is why her neighborhood still doesn't have power. Centerpoint says circuit level outages typically include locations where more than a hundred customers are impacted. So if you see street lights, surrounding neighborhoods or grocery stores are without power, that's typically a sign that the problem is circuit level. I'm very desperate at this point. Like, please turn the power on. Just turn it on, please. I miss my kids. <laughs> I miss being at home. A man accused of shooting a woman in the head and barricading himself inside of a home for hours is now in custody. San Antonio police said an argument between a man and a woman led up to the shooting early this morning. The victim told police the man was still inside. A SWAT team attempted to lure him, but he did not cooperate, sparking a five hour standoff. It ended once authorities deployed tear gas. Police did not release the suspect's identity yet, and it's unclear what charges he may be facing. The woman is hospitalized in critical condition. June saw a sharp decline in migrant encounters on the border. Statistics show they were 29% lower than in May. The numbers were also the lowest monthly total since January of 2021. The decline comes from President Biden's proclamation on June 4th to temporarily suspend the entry of certain non-citizens across the southern border. Since his proclamation, the seven-day average is down to less than 1,900 migrant encounters per day. More than 70,000 individuals have been return to more than 170 countries. COVID-19 is surging once again. The CDC says a significant marker, the amount of COVID detected in wastewater, has reached high levels for the first time this summer. The virus is growing or likely growing in 44 states and the District of Columbia. California is one of the seven states with very high COVID-19 levels. The others include Arkansas, Florida, Maryland, Nevada, Oregon, and Texas. These states are seeing more COVID-19 related hospitalizations and emergency room visits. A new subvariant called Flirt is helping drive up these cases. Now remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. Senator Bob Mendez has been found guilty on all counts in federal corruption trials. That's straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Also ahead, chaos and scrutiny following the shooting at a Trump rally in Pennsylvania. A New York jury has found Senator Bob Mendez guilty on all counts in his federal corruption trial. The New Jersey Democrat was convicted of 16 counts, including bribery, extortion and wire fraud. Mendez was also found guilty of obstruction of justice and acting as a foreign agent. He now faces a maximum of 222 years in prison. A sentencing date has been set for October 29th. Following the guilty verdict, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called for Mendez to resign. Now, the investigation into former President Donald Trump's attempted assassination continues into day three. The U.S. Secret Service has come under fire for what many are calling the worst security failure in four decades. Both the agency and Pennsylvania law enforcement have accused one another as the one responsible for failing to secure the building where the gunman was hiding. It was the most traumatic thing I think I've ever been through. It's a sentiment shared by many who attended the rally Saturday where former President Donald Trump was hit and another person killed. But there's another growing concern. I have been looking behind the stands, watching Secret Service, obviously alerted by something about a minute before. It's those minutes before the shooting now under increasing scrutiny. You could see the crowd. They were alerted by something. They were like running. You could see them scattering across the lawn. CNN has learned that snipers were stationed inside the building that the shooter scaled. He's going down! Witness accounts and videos show the crowd aware of the shooter on the roof nearly two minutes before gunfire rang out. The time that it took to get from the bystanders who were observing it 
to the command post out to the agents was just too long. No one should have ever been able to get on that rooftop. The Secret Service says that rooftop was on a building outside of their hard perimeter, and local law enforcement was responsible for securing it. The service's director was pressed on accountability Monday night. The buck stops with me. I am the director of the Secret Service. It was unacceptable. I think that an investigation is necessary at this point within Congress, not just the FBI, not just others. On Tuesday, the heads of Homeland Security, the FBI, and the Secret Service were asked by congressional House members to attend a hearing later this month to determine if there were holes in established procedure or a failure to follow proper protocol. But either way, there needs to be accountability. Uh, and at that time, I would call for the head of the Secret Service to either resign or be removed. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. The Biden administration is marking the two year anniversary of the National Suicide and Crisis Hotline. It has an easy to remember number. It's 988 that works similar to 911. The Department of Health and Human Services has invested nearly $1.5 billion into the hotline. The hotline is part of the Biden administration's strategy to address the nation's mental health and substance abuse crisis. 988 has options specifically for veterans and LGBTQ plus youth and young adults. It's a critical part of your life, but many don't know this organ and it allows you to communicate. And they say that sound is about as unique as a fingerprint, but overusing or underusing your voice can cause harm. It's called a larynx, but most know it as a voice box, the place where vocal folds are housed, but it does so much more than produce sound. Nobody ever thinks about the larynx. Uh, I was used to, to joke. Uh, that it was the Rodney Dangerfield of the body that it really got no respect. Dr. David Lott with Mayo Clinic says the organ not only produces sound, but also regulates how we swallow, helps prevent liquid from getting into the lungs, and helps us breathe by controlling how much air goes into our lungs. So it's really, truly an amazing organ because nobody ever thinks about it until it's gone. But Lott says the larynx can be harmed by things like surgery or exposure to certain environmental factors, but how the vocal folds vibrate can also be affected by misuse or overuse of your voice. Are you going to lots of sports activities and, and yelling? Uh, do you have a, a job where you are required to maybe speak on the phone or do multiple interviews or whatever it may be? Um, things like that can not only affect the vocal fold vibration, but they can also, from just tiring out, can affect the mechanics on how the, the vocal folds come together. To prevent harm, Lot says to listen to your body. If there's pain in your throat or changes in your voice, step back and relax your vocal cords. Sip a warm beverage. If you're taking something to drink and you're relaxing, it's forcing you to sit back, let those muscles relax, let your voice relax, and then move on from there. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. U.S. Senators Ted Cruz and John Cornyn introduced legislation requiring the U.S. government to impose restrictions on federal aid and prohibit trade and development funds for guarantees in Mexico if the country fails to deliver the water it agreed to. You can read this article on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We had a little sun, a little cloud cover, and two or three little showers that rolled around the area. Interesting, uh, for the next few days, we're going to start picking up more and more rain activity. In fact, weekend could be a little bit on the soggy side. We're going to talk about that. It's 90 degrees right now. Of course, for the humidity, it feels like 100. Our high officially 93, slightly below the 95. It's not going to be the temperatures that are going to go up. It's going to be the humidity, um, but the rain is going to help out. We're going to talk about that coming up in a moment. Over the, the area and that didn't happen. The, what happened is that uh, things sort of changed around and the upper air currents are uh, making, you know, kind of a fool out of me. But uh, let me tell you why. Did have a couple of little showers. One of them came right through the city right there, but nothing serious, nothing uh, to worry about. The rest of Texas, not even a cloud. They are just hot and dry and they're all in the triple digits. So uh, last night you might have heard me mention we had a derecho, okay, and the Spanish is derecho, but uh, what they're calling it is what we used to call a squall line. In other words, a line of storms started here. Then let me let's go back to the beginning. It started here and then uh, it went down and produced all kinds of problems with 
tornadoes and heavy wind and heavy rain. Now that is already down uh, into Arkansas, so it's getting kind of close to Texas. Now, here's the map. There's the dome. It's split in half, so there's hot air on the um, east side and hot air on the west. The west is really not getting a break out of this. The big dome is going to be over there, but what it happens here, if you have a hill here and a hill there, you've got a valley in between. Well, that valley of low pressure is going to give us almost daily afternoon showers for the next four or five days. And it's kind of like you get up in the morning, clouds, by noon, it's raining. Uh, these are going to be popping around the area pretty much uh, quite a bit for the next few days. The rainfall now is not a tropical storm, but it is an upper air trough that is allowing these uh, storms to build. So that's kind of going to be in our uh, future for us to deal with. The heat wave, all of these counties and these states actually are under that heat wave. And right about here, you will notice there's the rain. That's the derecho that moved south to St. Louis out of Chicago. Now. This one's interesting. I'll tell you why. You see this? 70 degrees. What is that? This is supposed to be in a, in a heat wave, but it all backed up over here. Okay, we got it there. So this is actually a cool front, believe it or not, middle of July, and it's going to drop down to somewhere about North Texas, maybe Louisiana, Dallas, uh, that area. That is going to be the reason why the moisture starts piling up over our area and gives us additional uh, rain chances. Now, high temperatures, as you can see, are fairly comfortable above that. I'm not saying that's coming here. I'm just saying that it's going to be getting into the neighborhood and it's going to help trigger that rain chance while the West continues baking with 110, the forecast high in Phoenix. Again, it's very quiet in the Atlantic. Don't want to say anything. I want to wake it up or something. Uh, we do have two little um, tropical waves, but uh, again, for five to five to seven days. Don't expect anything coming out of the Atlantic. Now for us, uh, this trough is going to make it a very interesting couple of days because I'm calling for daily afternoon showers uh, every day. So tomorrow, high of 92 with isolated showers in Port Lavaca and in Cuero, getting up to 93 isolated showers again. So we're going to be ramping up from uh, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, and then a little bit more on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday, and Tuesday. And these three days here, uh, we may see a, uh, two to four inches of rain. So I'm calling it tropical rain. Why? Because these are the big storms that get big and they just drop a lot of rain in one spot. No, um, you know, severe weather lines like we saw uh, in the springtime and certainly not a tropical storm, but it's going to be wet anyway, so just plan on that as uh, more rain returns to the crossroads. That's your seven-day forecast, reminding everybody to, uh, that we have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that, put Crossroads Today on your phone. We'll toss it back to Karina. Thank you, Matt. Coming up next on 25 News Now 5, we're going to take a look at your stocks. Plus, the value of homes have doubled since 2017. Learn why experts are cautioning against overborrowing. the first people to land on the moon. On July 16, 1969, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Michael Collins launched into space on top of an enormous Saturn V rocket. Four days later, Armstrong and Aldrin touched down on the moon, becoming the first humans to walk on another planetary body. Incredible, even now. It was. It, how many years? It was 1969. Oof. I'm uh, not going to do the math for you here. I was two years old. <laughs> no, but it, it was a moment. And, you know, that's the, the one time, and I, I think people who were there can agree with me, we all sat all at the TV and just mm -hmm. watched and watched and watched because it was fascinating, and, uh, and everybody remembers it. I mean, people would stop on the corners of the stores and look at the windows inside of the TVs mm -hmm. uh, to, to see it happen, and, and it happened. So it's, it's a amazing. historic moment, yeah, yeah, and the peak of the Cold War, too. Uh, right there, and it, you know, right at the close of the decade when Kennedy said we're going to do it now, so it's amazing. Anyway, folks, we've got uh, additional showers coming in. In fact, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a washout. Now, if you've got outdoor jobs or work to do, 
I think you're going to be dodging shower activity tomorrow and the next day, Thursday. Should be semi-reasonable, but by the time we get to the weekend, these are going to be downpours. And uh, right now, I mean, it's just a wild number here, two to four inches possible between now and the weekend. Uh, so this is uh, going to be uh, a little bit on the wet side as we get to the weekend. Stack up 37 points. Oil down $1.15, closing at $80.76 per barrel. Homes in the U.S. are worth a collective $33 trillion. That's more than double their value from 2017. Home equity is much all the homes are worth minus the mortgage debt. Experts are saying it's a record high, but many homeowners aren't able to liquefy the equity in their homes. To access that, homeowners should avoid a cash out ref refinance where rates might not be in their favor. Instead, they might want to consider a home equity loan. It serves more like a credit card to draw money as needed but experts warn against borrowing too much. And stay with us. We're going to take one last look at your forecast when we come back. Plus, today we celebrate the 55th anniversary of Apollo 11's historic launch. Plus, here's a look at World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. The attempted assassination investigations continue. David Muir reports from the RNC as Donald Trump and the Republicans make their case. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir.